All right, this is OpenStax US History, Chapter 2, the review questions. So beginning with uh, question number one, which country initiated the era of Atlantic exploration? The answer is D, Portugal. Uh, you might think that it was Spain, uh, but that is not the case. Portugal was interested in trading east, established trading routes in West Africa, and it was only later that Spain came into the picture with, of course, Christopher Columbus. Of course, a person who uh, predates and is associated with Portuguese exploration is Prince Henry, sometimes called Prince Henry the Navigator, one of the early sponsors of exploration in Europe. So the correct answer there is D, Portugal. Question number two, which country established the first colonies in the Americas? C, Spain. This, of course, is Christopher Columbus. And of course, you should be able to get this answer uh, correct here. The Spanish were the first ones to the New World, 1492. Question number three, where did Christopher Columbus land? This is a little bit tricky, but we should be able to eliminate some answers here. Jamestown, this is the first permanent English settlement, right? So the fact that this is English should already allow us to eliminate it. Mexico did become a Spanish possession, but it was not the first area where the Spanish arrived. It was not the first area where Columbus arrived. Columbus landed in what we call the West Indies. If you're looking at a map, uh, there's Louisiana, there is Florida, uh, I don't know, Mexico looks something like this, right? The Bahamas are, you know, and the West Indies are, are these islands kind of in this area right here, and that's where Columbus first landed. Both of these answer choices are in fact in the West Indies. Columbus, in fact, did go to both of them, the Bahamas and Hispaniola. The correct answer though here, B, the Bahamas. It's a little bit tricky but Bahamas is the correct answer. Question number four, why did authors of Probanzas de Moritos choose to write in a way they did? What should we consider when we interpret these documents today? So first of all, recall that these are proof of merit, right? Okay, who wrote them? It was Spanish conquistadors. Uh, what was the purpose, right? Get funding. And who was the audience? It was the Spanish king. All right, so these proof of merits describe the new world written by the Spanish conquistadors intended for the Spanish king in an effort to get money. So recall that for Spanish conquistadors, if the Spanish king gave you authority to go to the New World and extract whatever wealth could be found, you had a vested interest in portraying the New World as being exceptionally wealthy. So we got to keep in mind that although, yes, they do describe the New World, these proof of merits that we have today, they were also written with the purpose. And that purpose was maybe to over-exaggerate the amount of wealth and opportunity that potentially the New World provided. Question number five, where did the Protestant Reformation begin? The answer is A, Northern Europe. We should be able to eliminate some choices here. The American colonies, no way. The Protestant Reformation, roughly speaking, chronologically, early 1500s, uh, I don't know, 1519 is coming to mind right now. That might be incorrect. Uh, Spain was a bastion of Catholicism. It remained Catholic for the duration of the Protestant Reformation. England, although it did break away from the Catholic Church, was home to the Anglican Reformation, which was very similar to the Protestant Reformation, but different. Uh, the Protestant Reformation was the breaking apart of Christianity. So you have Christianity as a religion. And uh, this is becoming a little bit messy to uh, read, so let's try to... Christianity as a religion, 
broke off into two categories, Catholic and Protestant. Now they're both considered Christians, but they're different versions of that. This was started by Martin Luther, right? Martin Luther. All right, question number six, what was the chief goal of the Puritans? So you can kind of get the right answer in the name. Puritans wanted to purify the Church of England. All right, the goal of the Puritan Church was to purify the Church of England. So the correct answer would be this one right here, B, to eliminate any traces of Catholicism from the Church of England. Uh, let's see, answer choice A, achieve lasting peace with Catholic nations. Nope, the Puritans were strictly anti-Catholic. We know that for sure. To assist Henry VIII in his quest for an annulment to his marriage. Again, cleansing the Church of England. The king was the head of the Church of England. So in the eyes of the Puritans, they pretty much said, well, the king is too much like the Pope. And for that reason, we need to reform the Church of England even more. It, it makes no sense just to um, break away from the Catholic Church. And then instead of just having the Pope be in charge of it, you just say the king's in charge. It's essentially the same structure by a different name. Puritans didn't like that. To create a hierarchy within the Church of England modeled off that Catholic, again, no Puritans are anti-Catholic. They would, in fact, want the exact opposite of that. They want it to be less Catholic, purify the Church of England of any elements they deem too Catholic, right, too Catholic. Question number seven, what reforms to the Catholic Church did Martin Luther and John Calvin call for? Uh, there were a couple here. Uh, ban indulgences. Essentially, an indulgence was something you could buy from the Catholic Church, and they would guarantee you a place in heaven, uh, end church corruption. We might want to say end taxation and uh, vernacular Bible and sermons. So vernacular, that's a very fancy word for language people speak so both martin luther and oops uh both martin luther and john calvin wanted sermons and the bible to be in the language that people speak not the official language of the catholic church which was latin right so that's some criticisms or reforms they had and think reform reform means our reform reformation because initially Luther and Calvin, mostly Luther, wanted to reform the Catholic Church, make it better. But when things weren't going, it just completely broke away and created their own Protestant version of it. Question number eight, why didn't England make stronger attempts to colonize the New World before the late 16th century and early 17th century? This is a good time to explain what these terms mean, because oftentimes this is very confusing for students who are not accustomed to history. Uh, when we say the 16th century, that is actually the years 1500 to 1599. The 17th century is the year 1600 to 1699. And that's because when you started from year zero to year 99, we call it the first century. And then so the second century would then be year 100 through year 199. So it, again, it's a little bit confusing because when you see the number 16, you want to think 1600s, but you got to go back one uh, one number there. So uh, what this is really asking is, you know, why didn't England make stronger attempts to colonize the new world? I don't know, from 1570 to let's say 16... 30 or something like that, right? What was going on in England at that time. And really the one event that we that we focused on or that we talked about was actually one of the things that we mentioned here that was the Protestant Reformation was going on during this particular period of time. 
the Anglican Reformation was going on, the wars of religion were going on, and if we want to get more specific, 1588 was the Spanish Armada, right? The Spanish Armada. Uh, so looking at these answer choices, uh, A, English attention was turned to internal struggles and the encroaching Catholic menace to Scotland and Ireland. Well, that looks like a potentially good answer there, right? Because that fits some of the criteria of what was going on at that time. Uh, question number B, English monarchy did not want to declare direct war on Spain by attempting to colonize the Americas. Well, the English were already at war with Spain, right? Spain's attempt to try and make sure that England remains Protestant. That's what forced the Spanish, or that's what caused the Spanish to send the Armada. So we can get rid of answer choice B. That doesn't make any sense. The English military was occupied in battling for control of New Netherlands. Again, where is New Netherland? That is in the New World. This doesn't make sense. How could the English be busy in the New World and then not send anybody to the New World, right? This answer choice is just nonsensical. And question of D, the English crown refused to fund colonial expeditions. Uh, this could potentially be an answer, but let's recall the first English settlement of Roanoke. So it wasn't that there weren't any uh, efforts to fund colonies. Uh, Roanoke is an example of England trying to fund a colony, but then because the Spanish Armada attacked, those supply ships could not continue and Roanoke became the lost colony. So we can also eliminate D as a possible correct answer choice, leaving us with A. Question number nine, what was the main goal of the French in colonizing the Americas? Uh, the French ended up in what was today Eastern Canada, also called a frozen wasteland, according to the French. So not a lot of people wanted to move there. Question A, nope, not the right answer. Uh, again, because it was a frozen wasteland, you did not have a large number of French settlers ending up there. Trading, especially for furs, that's potentially a good correct answer. Uh, C, gaining control of shipping lanes. This doesn't make any sense, right? Shipping lanes, what, you know, what shipping lanes, right? Right, there is no trade going on essentially, you know, back and forth between the new world, at least not that the French want to take control of. Uh, and C, spreading Catholicism. This could be potentially a correct answer with the Jesuits. Right, with the Jesuits. Now, had this question actually specified Jesuits, we could probably go towards answer D, but because it's mainly just talking about the French in general, the correct answer here is B. Right, the correct answer here is B. Uh, 10, what were some of the main differences among the non Spanish colonies? So we got the Dutch, we got the French, and we got the English. And actually in this chapter, I don't know to the extent to which uh, the English are talked about here. Uh, one of the things you can mention for all three is geography, right? Where they are located, that's a big one. We could think about motives, right? That's a big one. Uh, for the Dutch, they're all about the money, right? Trading for the French, they're also about the money, right? For both of these countries, fur is a big deal for both of these nations. Uh, the French also have an interest in Catholic conversion, where the Dutch are much more religious tolerant. And the English have some of the same motives as well, but one thing that separates England from these colonies is um, population, right? The English send, they call them the swarming English. And again, I don't call, quite recall off the top of my head specifically which, you know, what some of these aspects um, uh, kind of talk about in this particular chapter. I might be spilling over a little bit into chapter three, but think about where these colonies were located, what were their motives, motivations in coming to the new world, and then we might say what did the colonies produce, right, or ultimately what was their function in the aftermath. Question number 11, how could Spaniards uh, obtain encomiendas? The correct answer is A. In regards to Spanish political system, it is an absolute monarchy. 
all right the person in charge of spain and the colonies is the spanish king or queen they have the final say all right the same is with france whereas in places like england and the netherlands they have parliaments or groups of nobles which you have to deal with uh, they didn't come from any other places, right? They can only be served from the Spanish crown. Uh, if you don't recall what an encomienda is, that is the right to extract labor. We could say also enslave. Local Indian populations, right? Local Indian populations. The right to extract labor or the right to enslave local Indian populations, that was given by the Spanish king, right? Question number 12, which of the following best describes the Columbian exchange? The Columbian exchange is biology, right? Biology, plants and animals and disease, right? Is a big part of it. The letters Columbus and other uh, conquistadors exchange, nope. An exchange of plants and animals and diseases. That sounds pretty good so far. A form of trade between the Spanish and natives. No, because we have to remember that much of the Columbian exchange was unintentional, right? That spreading these diseases, bringing over animals and plants and unleashing them on the environment and having them just devastate the environment, it, you know, wasn't really intended. The way in which explorers exchanged information, no, has nothing to do with that. All right, biology, plants, and animals, B. Uh, and lastly, why did diseases like smallpox affect Indians so badly? Uh, let's look at our answer choices. Indians were less robust. We want to look for something in regards to immunity, right? That a lot of these diseases, we got the new world over here, got the old world here. The big difference is that on this side, you have livestock. So people lived with their animals. I'll scroll down so you can see it. Uh, livestock, people lived with their animals. And by living with their animals for thousands of years, uh, disease got spread to these people over here in the old world. And over time, they built up an immunity. Now, remember, these two worlds were separate for nearly 10,000 years. All right, no interaction. And so while diseases were, you know, a plenty on this side of the world, there were no diseases on this side. Uh, episodes like the Black Death, that's a good example. And then when Columbus arrived on the scene unknowingly, uh, you know, when Old World came to the new, uh, what was brought with them were diseases like the Black Death. And because there was no immunity on this side, uh, there were massive numbers of casualties, perhaps 75%, 80%, maybe even 90% of everybody in the New World died. Uh, Indians were less robust. Nope, that's not the right answer. Uh, Europeans deliberately infected Indians. This is not the right answer choice either. Even though it helped European colonization and helped Spanish conquest, the Spaniards didn't understand disease as much as the Native Americans did. It was unintentional, but certainly helped and facilitated European conquest of the New World. This is looking like the right answer. Conditions in the Americas were harsh. The Indians, Europeans alike were devastated by disease. Nope. Uh, this exchange of disease was more or less one-sided, right? One-sided. So the correct answer is C, right? No immunity.